And joining us now is Dr. Graham Sisson, Executive Director, Governor's Office on Disability and Assistant Attorney General. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to be here today as we celebrate many anniversaries, the uh, 30th anniversary of the ADA, the 100th anniversary of vocational rehabilitation, and the, uh, the uh, 75th anniversary of the National Disability Awareness and uh, Employment Month. Um, I want to give a special thank you to uh, Governor Ivey for her continued support of people with disabilities. I also give a special thank you to uh, to Commissioner Bergeshaw, who is her personal friend. Uh, we work very close on many issues, and I want to thank the other workforce partners, uh, Commissioner Fitzgerald, uh, Ed Castile. Um, also, um, the ADA, in my opinion, is the is the civil rights law for people with disabilities. And VR is the number one program for employment of people with significant disabilities. I'm looking at the camera, making sure I, I'm camera worthy here. Okay, so they have both made a positive impact um, on the uh, lives of people with disabilities uh, since the ADA's passage July 26 and vocational rehabilitation in 1920. Um, Changed the paradigm. You hear it, uh, uh, Richard Pemitel talk about people with disabilities. The environment is changing to meet the needs of people with disabilities. Instead of people with disabilities have to change to meet the environment. Um, July 1990 was right after I had been graduated from Vanderbilt Law School. Unlike the ADA generation of today, I had not grown up with the Americans with Disabilities Act. I was injured in 1982 motor vehicle accident caused by a drunk driver who was only uh, 17 years old and had both a spinal cord injury and a head injury. My hopes and dreams for a military career initiate at West Point were shattered in an instant. Much like uh, Richard Pimentel became deaf in the flash of a rocket explosion in a bunker. The ADA was not my immediate future then, but it's helped me greatly over 30 years from better building accessibility to reasonable accommodation on the job, in fact, in several jobs for me. In fact, uh, post ADA, physical accessibility uh, to buildings has greatly improved, especially compared to when I first acquired my disability 39 years ago. The ADA helps ensure that the American dream filters down to people with disabilities who are America's largest minority. But has the American dream been made completely available to people with disabilities? I would say yes and no. The ability to move around uh, frequently and away from institutions uh, and into the community has vastly improved, but not always in employment. The ADA has opened uh, uh, not as has not opened as many doors when it comes to employment. Many uh, people with significant disabilities remain unemployed or underemployed. Uh, the governor's office on disability uh, helps to try to address some of these issues working in partnership with the other entities on the call today. But we still have to change attitudes. The ADA as a law by itself will not change attitudes. But we have come a long way from the ugly laws that uh, Richard Pimtel mentioned, which a person with a disability could be automatically expelled from business just because of their appearance. The governor's office on disability, tell, let me tell you a little bit more about that. We work to help Alabamians with disabilities realize the American dream by maximizing leverage of state resources. The governor's office on disability serves two primary purposes. The first, the liaison to the governor and the governor's office on disability issues. The governor and the governor's office send constituents with disabilities to the governor's office on disability for assistance. Good informs the governor and the governor's office of cons constituent concerns, especially constituents with disabilities and their unmet needs like accessible and affordable housing, 
transportation, access, and employment. The second major purpose of the governor's office on disability is to serve as statewide clearinghouse for information on disability resources in Alabama. We compile these resources on our website, and our website is good, G-O-O-D, dot Alabama, spelled out, dot G-O-V, good, dot Alabama, dot gov. Please check out our website and look at these resources. Um, we also work on making policy better for people with disabilities and their families and providing technical assistance on the Americans with Disabilities Act and other disability rights laws uh, requirements uh, for businesses. We, would, uh, we also work on developing legislation to state legislation, that is, to meet the needs of people with disabilities and their families. So as I close out my comments, and again, I want to keep my make a little bit short of my time because I'm the, I'm the last speaker on today's uh, uh, seminar. Let's work together to usher in a new era, or I would say a new era of golden opportunity for people with disabilities in all aspects of American society, including employment. We need everybody to be an advocate. And again, um, I want to close out with a few uh, quotes that I thought were very significant. Um, employers, one by Tom Perez, employers have recognized sometime that it's smart business to have a diverse workforce, one in which many views are represented and everyone's talents are valued. Well, disability is part of diversity. Stephen Hawking said this, however difficult life may seem, there is always something you can do and succeed at. And particularly when we talk about employment, I believe that every person with a disability, given the right supports and reasonable accommodation, can work, can do some type of job. And the problem, another unknown uh, author said this, the problem is not the person's disability, the problem is society's view of the person's ability. So you heard speaker after speaker today talking about awareness. We continue to make people aware. So the, uh, the disability and employment workshops that we have and, and, the, uh, and the opportunities for people to come together and hire people with disabilities, this, will, this brings about greater awareness. The more people with disabilities that we can get hired, the, the, the stronger the message that people with disabilities are an able part of the workforce. Every disability conceals a vocation, if only we can find it, which will turn the necessity to a glorious gain. That was C.S. Lewis. Just a few more. Um, this is a, by somebody I don't know, Karen Clay. The severity of one's disability does not determine their level of potential. The greatest barrier that person with disabilities have to overcome are not steps or curves, it's expectations. So let's, I wanna close out by saying, thank you again for the opportunity to speak to you. Let's raise expectations for people with disabilities. Let's all work together to increase employment opportunities for people with disabilities. Thank you.